guys, it's May May. Did you know that my YouTube channel has 3.3 thousand videos on it? Yep, it's a lot. I've been doing this a while. And remember I told you there were some videos that you haven't seen? Well, today we're doing one of those. This video in particular was first released April 20th of 2013, and it only has 800 views. Now, I have to be honest with you and tell you that I can understand why, because it is a terribly filmed video. But the project was cute, and that's what I'm going to show you today. So this is the project we did. Actually, we were making Vince's surprise birthday invitations and we did them in this manner. So how this works is this little collar tucks under the tie and it opens up to reveal the card on the inside. Now, I just made the little outside today to show you, but what we did for Vince's original video was we made invitations and we mailed them out for a surprise party we were having for him. And I just love this because this is Vince. If you don't know him, he is a, he loves to wear a suit. He loves to wear a shirt and tie. That's just who he is. So that's what we did. So I'm going to show you how to make this sweet little card for the guy in your life that loves to wear a shirt and tie. So to start with, you need a piece of cardstock that is four and a quarter by 11. This is just standard cardstock size. And I'm going to do this a little different than the original one that I did. For whatever reason, in my original one, I cut off half an inch. There's really no need to do that. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into my trimmer and I'm going to score it. You could do this with your scoreboard too, but I'm going to score this at five and a quarter. Let me move my cut blade out of the way so I don't make that mistake again, I should say. <laughs> All right, so I've scored this at five and a quarter. This is going to be the front of the shirt, okay? So then over here, we have this edge we need to do some trimming. So at half an inch, you see I'm pushing this over to half an inch. I want to come down an inch and a quarter and I want to go up an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to turn this where I can see my trimmer and I'm going to use this ruler on the side to help me. So using the little guide on my trimmer, I'm going to cut down to an inch and a quarter. There's that. Now I'm going to lift this up and bring my blade down and I'm going to go up to three inches and that would get me my inch and a quarter on each side. They do not have to be perfect. They don't have to be exactly that length, just something close. And that is going to be our collar. So on my original project, I used my Cricut to cut the tie that went on the front. I cut the little top and the body of the tie using that. So if you have access to that, you can do that. You can also just cut a template out if you want to trace a tie. But I'm going to show you how to make a template or make a tie. I'm going to do it on white so it can be my template going for forward because I can just trace it onto my um, pattern paper. But for you, you might want to just do this right on the pattern paper. All right, so this guy is an inch and a quarter. And what I'm going to do is use my ruler and I want to come in and find the center, okay? The center of this guy is five eighths. So I'm just gonna go right here and make a mark, okay? Then you can use your ruler or you can just use your cutting mat here. I want you to come up the side and make a mark at half an inch. This does not have to be perfect. It's pretty forgiving, believe it or not. And then I'll come up this side and make a mark at half an inch. I love doing this. I love using just measurement to figure these things out, you know? and get a tie out of just a piece of flat paper. I love this. Okay, so now what we want to do up here at the top, I want to measure in to where I have a half inch in the middle. So I tell you what, this works really easy on my cutting mat if I just kind of float like this and I can go half inch, half inch, just like that. And I can double check to make sure. Yep, I just need it to end up at half an inch at the top. Okay, while we're here, let's get this little guy. We only have to do two little marks here. I'm gonna put him on my cutting mat. I'm gonna mark in a quarter of an inch and in a quarter of an inch. So you can see why I say make a template. You won't have to do these measures every time. You can use this to trace. All right, this guy, I think I forgot to tell you, was half an inch by one. We'll put all that in the description for you. So now from pencil mark to corner, let's make a slice. And then over here, I'm gonna go from corner to pencil mark and make a slice. And this is gonna be the knot of my tie. And then down here, we're gonna do the same thing. Now this one I have to do a little bit different. I'll show you what I mean. Down here, I'm gonna go ahead and make from my center point to my half inch point a cut. And then from my half inch point to my center point a cut. All right, so there's the bottom of my tie, but I'm gonna use my trimmer to finish this off because it's a little bit long. So I'll come right here and that little mark we made there to that first little point, we wanna slice that. Now I wanna show you a trick too, because this can get a little wobbly. Grab some yellow tape. This is some I used a minute ago. Grab some yellow tape, just stick this into place so you don't have to hold it, okay? And then sink your blade 
and go up and then down and you'll get a perfect angle cut every time. Okay, so we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to flip this around and go to the other side with it. So from that half inch, just like that, to my point at the other end. Stick that down. I'm not worried about going through my tape. This is just a piece I keep next to me. I always keep a piece of yellow tape on the go. So I will add this to my on the go pile. And then this is a template, so I can leave that tape there or I can peel it off, either one. So now you have your template to pick your tie out for your card. I hope you can see this one right here. What I did was I went ahead and make myself, made myself a clear tie template as well. That way, if you're wanting to lay it onto cardstock and get a specific spot of it to be the tie, you can do that. So you can use this to trace. Plus, it'll last a long time and it's nice and sturdy for tracing. Here's an example. I like this with the little palm trees. And if I wanted to make sure I could get my palm trees, it's perfect using the little clear template to do that. That would be perfect for a little tie. Cute, huh? All right, so I'm gonna cut out my tie and I'll cut out my shirt and we'll get right back together. Now, the way I did this is not very paper efficient. So if you want to, you don't have to like float it where I did and use your clear to find the perfect tie. But if you did want it to be perfect, that would be a good way to do it. And then you could put this back for another use another time. You still can get several more ties off of there. All right, this is the shirt I decided to use. I think it is funny and it reminds me of like a Hawaiian shirt. And this is our card base. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over for now. And with our card base, I'm gonna fold our score line up and it should land just under our little cut mark at the top. And we can go ahead and crease that down. Cute, cute. And then we'll glue this guy on. This is from one of the summer packs from um, Echo Park. It's really cute. We'll make sure to link all this in the description for you guys. And then this is gonna mount right inside that front section that will flip open because this is the shirt, okay? That is so cute. Then we need to cut a strip to go right here as well. I'm gonna use a piece that is left over from where I cut the shirt down, but I wanna show you the size of this one. That strip is a half an inch, okay? A half an inch wide. So we wanna cut this one three eighths. For me, that gives me the perfect edge around the collar. I also wanna cut it four and a quarter wide. So what I'm going to do, I want this to lay kind of well. I'm going to be a little fussy here. I'm going to find the center of it. The reason I'm finding the center is I want it to line up correctly around the collar. So I'm going to do this side here. I got that one marked, and now I'm going to come over here to four and a quarter, and I'll be good. It'll match up pretty well. It may not be perfect. Okay, now here's the trick with this. Because this is the collar that's going to turn around, we want to glue this to the back side and only on that little half inch area up there. And it is the same width as the collar. It's not the same height, okay? So you'll have a little bit of an edge. While it's wet, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and fold this around. The reason is when you fold it, it's gonna just slightly bring that edge in right here. And that's kind of what we want it to do. So go ahead and fold it in. And you can just kind of work this until it meets. Kind of play with it and get your collar lined up. This is just so stinking cute. All right, and then the next thing we're gonna do is add our little stopper, and we do that with a little foam. So you just want your foam to be kind of in the center of this piece, because you wanna leave a little bit of room for the collar to tuck around. And what you do is you come to the top, and you're gonna center this at the top. If you wanna measure here, you can. I'm not gonna measure, I'm gonna eyeball it. If I need to move it, I will. I'll just kinda look at that now. And I'm gonna tuck this down. And then I'll tuck this down and that gets my collar established and that's what holds our card shut. Okay, then you're gonna, just going to take this guy and glue him into place like so. I got my foam a little low, so I'm going to fix it. It's blocking my collar. I, I forgot about that. I need to make sure my foam is a little high. Okay, so with my foam moved up, we can go back here to the middle again. Let's check for center. It's pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good. I'm gonna tuck this side under. That's so cute. This is gonna be a cute one. And now we can glue him. And what I mean is now I can tuck him up a little bit so that I have plenty of room at the bottom here. Isn't that adorable? Oh my goodness. All right, glue him down. Now you can do so much. You can add a pocket 
you could um, emboss. I think this would be really cute if you emboss the tie to give it a little texture or if you emboss the shirt before you put it on, that would be really cute too. But this is now your card. On the inside, you do anything you want. You can put a gift card. Maybe you put a pocket in and put a little gift card inside of there. So whenever the recipient gets it, they just open the collar and the shirt opens like that. And then they can just close the collar back and it holds it closed. I don't remember where I saw this. This was literally in 2000, did I say 2008? It was a long time ago. I don't remember where I saw it the first time, but I loved it and I couldn't wait to make them. So I hope you guys love them as much as I do. Aren't these gonna be great for your masculine cards? And listen, it's perfect for graduation because if your guys are like mine, they all had to have a shirt and tie for graduation and wouldn't that be super cute? All right, there you go, guys. Another video you never saw. If you would like to go back and see the original video, listen, it's bad. I'm telling you, it's bad. But Josh does make an appearance. So if you'd like to hear baby Josh, it's a good one to watch. And we'll make sure we link it in the description below. All right, guys, until next time, bye now. Mm -hmm.